Now this isn't one of the three things I'm gonna show you today, but it is something I'm practicing a lot right now, which is basically just sitting down on the kit and improvising because I've got the Minel Drum Festival coming up in about three weeks. And a big part of festivals and drum clinics in general is improvising. And it's not always that you set out to do a solo, it's just that maybe there's a Q and A that says, hey, that thing that you always do with your left foot, what is that? And it's like, oh, it's, you know, I just kind of add in a chick and then all of a sudden you're just going, So you have to have your improv chops ready for those moments. Now let's get into this lesson, three things that I practice every day. The first thing I do when I sit down on any kit, especially because I've got a kit at home with some practice pads on it, then I've got my private lesson room that has a kit that I play on a lot. They're all the same size, but they're slightly different angles. And then I've got this kit. The first thing I do is I try to get acquainted with the drum set and especially the pedal tension. And the reason I say pedal tension is because I've never adjusted any of my pedals. However DW sends them, I take them out of the box. I put, I mean, unless they were extremely loose or extremely tight, I've never adjusted any of them. I put them on the kit and I just allow my foot to get used to them. So this exercise is really simple. 16th notes around the drum set. Let's assume we're dealing with a four piece kit here. We've got one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. The orchestration isn't that important, but I'm trying to get used to the position of the drums, try to eliminate rim hits and things like that. But on three E and a, four E and a, I put a bass drum between every note. So it essentially becomes 30 second notes. So we have one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, three E and a, four E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a. Let's give it a shot with a click. Link in the description below. Singles between hand and foot, it's its honestly something that's been frustrating me since I was a kid. I can never get it clean enough. I can never get it quite to that Vinnie Caliuta level on the Buddy Rich Memorial Scholarship concert where he like does it while he's pushing up his glasses looking at Dave. And it's the best. It's just the best moment ever and I always think like, oh, I'll do that. And then I go, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. So you might be asking though, why not just do just singles? And I definitely do that quite a bit for endurance, but the thing with that is you're getting used to this rhythm. You're just staying there the whole time and your foot kind of adapts to that. What I like about this exercise is that your foot is stagnant and then it has to jump in and be on time. So that not being used, then being used, not being used, I think that's much more practical because if you think about a groove like this, those three hits, those, that's what we're doing here. So having that, if you're good at playing singles in between your hands, you're gonna be good at doing it like this, in a groove. Not that you would ever have to do this for very long. At least I hope you don't. But that's what this exercise is all about. And like I said, it gets me acquainted with the position of the drums as well as the tension of the pedal. Moving on to number two. So every day I pick a new groove environment to improvise inside of and to explore. Obviously in this instance, it's the Gadsden groove, single handed 16th note groove. And I just sit in that pocket, I sit in that tempo, in that feel and start exploring things. Doing some 30 second notes, is that too busy? Probably. Then, ooh, could I interject some triplet stuff going on here? And can I mess around with little hints of different subdivisions other than the straight 16th notes on the hi-hat? Also, I'm trying to find how far can I explore this thing without losing the actual groove itself. Naturally, sometimes I go too far, then I have to rein it back in, and sometimes I think I'm being a little too safe and I need to explore a little bit more. But the goal here is to pick a groove, any groove, and just start to explore it a little bit more and learn how to feel a little bit more free so you're not so trapped inside that groove. And finally, number three, this might be a bit torturous for some of you, but trust me, you will grow so much from it and it is soloing with a restriction. So that restriction could be a foot ostinato, you could have a, oh. 
Ooh, maybe like a little splash close, close. So you're soloing over this. Oh, I wish I could actually play that instead of just say that. No way I could. I'm trying. Come on, biscuits and buttercups. Anyways, like I was saying, soloing over a restriction. So the restriction in this instance, quarter note challenge, but a little bit different than how I showed it in the minor videos a few years ago. In this case, I'm just working on a specific part of the skills that I feel like I'm lacking in. By the way, I got this idea from a solo that Terry Ongoli did with Christian McBride. So I did not make this up. I saw him do a solo and I just thought, that'd be easy. And then I went, yeah, I think we're good. So I had to practice it. Now, where I feel like I'm lacking is right hand and bass drum together on the hi-hat against this. So you can think of like, what could you do? You can do in between, maybe some odd groupings. Like what would five sound like against this? Cool. Uh, some polyrhythmic stuff. Things like that. So I'm just working on that. It sounds like this. So as you can tell, I'm still working on it. And that's what I'm trying to tell you is I'm practicing these every day because I don't have them down. If I had it down, I would just nail a solo out for you and go like, yep, yeah, still working on it. It's like, are you? Or are you just making yourself feel better by playing things you can already play? I don't have this down yet. I'm trying things, I'm going for them and I'm physically not able to do that. Those threes, ah, I want those threes. And they're within reach, right? Like, you know what it's like to have something within reach where you're like, oh, I can think of it, and I'm so close to do it, but I just can't. So what's it gonna take? Oh yeah, practice. So YouTubers, I hope you got something out of seeing a little bit of the process, seeing what I'm working on right now, every single day, chipping away at it one note at a time, not getting disgusted with myself, not thinking, oh, I'm the worst drummer ever. It's like, it's just gonna take time. I'm gonna have to chip away at this stuff, and so will you for whatever it is you're working on. Hope you enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you're going to the Minel Drum Festival, I will see you there. If you're going to the UK Drum Show, I will see you there. I've got my own room this year called the Mike Johnson Education Room. It'll be me, Richard Spaven, Carter McLean, and Matt Griner from August Burns Red. So I'm very excited about that. So hopefully I'll see you there. If not, I will just talk to you in the comments below. Oh yeah, and check the description. Everyone asks about notation and like this metronome, all this stuff. All the information you could ever need is in the description below. But until next time, go practice.